episode 43 of The Beardcaster. My name is Scott Sikor, and I am... The Beardcaster. Welcome to a podcast all about beards and mustaches, beard culture, and all the stuff that goes along with it. Hear the stories from the people and learn the tricks of the trade on how to grow and maintain your style with advice taken from our personal experiences. It is the facial hair lifestyle we live and our daily lives in the world around us and how we deal with life. So please join me as I share the stories about these people and hear how they are using their facial hair to do great and fun things. I am Scott Sakura. I am, once again... The Beardcaster. And I'm joined by Bald Face Josh tonight. If you want more information on who I am, what this is about, you can go to thebeardcaster.com. You'll get direct links to all my social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, all of it. So you can just go there or you can go to my website and subscribe via iTunes, Stitcher, iHeartRadio. There's an assortment of different things so you can subscribe there easily. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, you can email me at scott at thebeardcaster.com. That's all the business for right now. The so this bitness. episode, yes, what was that? The bitness. That was the bitness. So I am fresh off the boat from coming back from the 2017 World Beard and Mustache Championship in Austin, Texas. Did you go through the Gulf of Mexico up the Mississippi River? No, we took a boat. Across the Ohio River? With Panama Canal. No Panama Canal? Yeah. We went through the St. Lawrence Seaway. <laughs> <laughs> By which, the way, is, which is nowhere near the Panama Canal. By the way of the Panama Canal. Around the Cape they, of Good Hope? Yes. <laughs> it was around that area. <laughs> I'm not good with navigation and boats. Apparently not. You nope. should have taken rail. <laughs> rail? You should have taken the train. Oh, the, the, the train. I could have probably taken the train, but yeah. So, no, I, I flew, and, bo- and boy, are my arms tired. Beat me to that That one. joke never gets old. It doesn't. No, because it didn't get old the whole weekend, too, as many times as I asked it. But uh, yeah, so I was down in Austin, Texas this past weekend competing in and covering the event. And boy, was it, it was the most amazingly fun time ever. And I, and I, and I had meant to like do all this recording and do all these interviews and stuff. And I I did get a lot of really good stuff. So there's going to be a lot of really cool episodes that are going to be coming up. But today I kind of wanted to talk about my whole experience. I recorded some stuff at the event in regards to like my participation and interviewed a couple people that I'm going to play today. So today's mostly about you, my, me. Yeah, call yeah. it. We'll, about call, you. we'll call me. What, me. It's about me. Me. It's about me. Well, not me. But not you. you. Me. You. Me. 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 You. You talking to me. You talking to me? Yeah. You going to be talking to me. I will talk to you. You will talk to me because you ask good questions. Um, I also watched it. Oh, you did? Mm-hmm. Oh, you. I watched the live stream. Oh. I, I didn't invest tons of time in the live stream, but I was texting you, and I'm like, when are you going on? Yeah. And, and I, you're like, I'm going on. And so then I, I jumped over, and I'm like, oh, okay. And then there was someone like, veterans have beards, and they need help because they're dying. And oh. hey, I'm not making light of that, oh, but I'm were, just saying it was like a veteran. Discussion. Yeah. Yeah, there there were people that were plugging the um the veterans fund. Yes, and, the farm, which is the yes, yes, yeah, which is the uh the group that is for um helping uh combat veterans who come back from service and help them get into farming, which helps them PTSD. T- yes, that stuff. Which it's a really cool charity. If people have been listening, they know I have issues with PTSD. Yes, so very sympathetic towards that. So I I did I did see that, and then I texted you back. And you're like, no, 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 we're going to be going on. And then they brought out like a freestyle mustache, I think they brought oh, out. Yeah. And I'm like, uh, this isn't you, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, is, 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 it, is it on a delay? Well, no, they had us. The, the story of how it kind of all happened was, is we did Saturday afternoon. And when we got there in the morning, I did an interview with someone, which is I'm so I can't wait to release that one, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna let the cat out of the bag about that one. Meow. No, meow. Right. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> meow. I'm not gonna let the Christopher Walking cat out of the bag. 
It's let a, me out. It's a, let me out. <laughs> let, let me out. Meow. But that it's a pillowcase, anyways. It's not a bag. We've oh, already determined that cats. Uh, it's a burlap sack. No pillowcases. But uh, yeah. So we got there on Saturday morning, and when we got there, I I did this interview with this fella, and then after that, I was like immediately like, okay, you guys got to go back to stage. You're you're. I mean, this is like I think eleven thirty or something. And it was supposed to start at one. It might have been a little bit later than so that. So you were backstage for an hour and a half waiting to go on? A lot longer than that. Oh, yeah, that's right. Because it was like two o'clock before you guys yeah. actually went on. Yeah. So we were like, we, they, and they had, I mean, this backstage area of this, of the, uh, the, the place it was at, um, was just amazing. I mean, there was like huge dressing rooms. With, Com- compare this to something. Oops, sorry. Compare this to something in Cleveland. Uh, Quick and Loans Arena. Better than that, probably. This place was... Cricket Loans meets... I don't know. Progressive Field? No, it was like a th- it was a theater. A th- or a theater. An amphitheater? Like an indoor amphitheater. Oh, okay. But, uh, yeah, so it was really nice. I mean, it was it's fairly new. And so they had dressing rooms, so we kind of hung out in there, and there were TVs in there showing what was going on. A category in front of us was lined up in the hallway, and so we were all getting ready. I mean, all of us, we didn't have to really do anything because we were all prepared. It's not like we had to, like, make sure everything was, like, curled properly or... Pss- Crimped. Yeah, more hairspray or hair drying and stuff like that. And so we just kind of hung out there. And then as you're going down this hallway, then they take these, like, you go into this separate room and this guy takes these, like, four-second videos of you. Where if you were watching the live stream in the bottom right mm-hmm. corner, there was a little video that popped up of each guy making a weird face or something. No, I didn't see that. Oh, well, you weren't paying attention. That no, you really... I saw the upper left-hand corner that showed when you walked off stage your interaction with the judges. Oh, what did I do? Um, you I did your typical. No, you did your typical thing where you where you went over and you quaffed your... Oh, yes. You, t- you fluffed your, fluff your beard a little bit. But and, now we're getting way too far ahead of okay, ourselves. Okay, well, no, here. I'm just, just merely stating no, what I what are you watch. really doing? I'm merely stating <laughs> that I watched oh. intently. Okay. So then then we had to wait in line, and then I, it felt like it was like two hours. And then the, as the, all the categories are going out, I got people like calling me and texting me, when are you going out? When are you going out? And I'm like, I think we're the next one. And then next thing I know, there's another category goes out. So there's, I think there was like four before us. I think I caught on with three to go. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember. But yeah, it just felt like we were back there forever. And then finally we get in, we're like getting ready to go on stage. And I decided I would start podcasting at this point. So I turn my microphone on and I start interviewing the guy next to me, Scott, and who's from Chicago. But you'll, well, I'm going to, splice all this in as we're going along here and uh is is this the part where you're going to insert scott no i I, i'm not going to insert scott (laughs) are you going to insert scott into the guy from chicago no i'm already right here right now what was this guy's name again scott oh he was scott he was scott there was a lot of scots i met a lot of scots and pauls so were you going to insert mini scott into scott no okay no 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 no, I, as soon as we're done talking here, I'll I'll insert the rest of the story. I'll ins- <laughs> the rest of the story. No, the rest of the story. <laughs> but I will insert what happened. That's a Paul, by the way. Isn't that Paul Harvey? Yeah, it is right there. See, look, you didn't know Paul. that. Another Paul reference. Yeah. Hey, Paul. Hey, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> There's way now. Now this joke just keeps getting deeper yes. and deeper. Yeah. yeah. But uh, so. I ended up starting the podcast, so I recorded some stuff I, I, when I was up on stage, when I got off of stage, and I start, I interviewed a couple people backstage, uh, I, so I just, I wanted to kind of get a little bit of the ambiance of what was going on right as it was happening, so, and I wanted to share that with you, but I wanted to also talk to Josh and have him kind of, because him and I have not talked in weeks. Oh, you, he didn't you even, really switched gears on me there. Gear, why? Well, because you were talking, telling the story, and then you started talking to the audience. Well, yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, That's okay. you didn't realize I wasn't looking at you deep into your eyes. <laughs> You've lost that love and feeling. I know. I really you did. Well, that's what I was your... going to say, because we haven't talked in, like, weeks. And, mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, so I recorded some stuff, and so I figured Josh and I hadn't, you know, talked in a while. So maybe this would be a good time for us to catch up. 
by you know talking about what happened. So and I, I legitimately don't know what happened outside of watching the stream for about forty five minutes to an yeah. hour. Yeah, so... And okay. seeing pictures here and there. Yeah, seeing some pictures. Lots of pictures. Lots of pictures. But in my blog that I did this week, that's going to be for this episode, I will, I've i been spending the past couple of days uh, working on about 3,000 pictures that I took, a lot of them, and I've whittled it down to 1,600 right now. And You hope to get it to three? <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope to get it to some point, but as I uploaded, was going to upload them all to, because I had to watermark them, but I uploaded them all to my blog and it cut it off at 250. So it only let me do 250. Well, then you got a lot of cutting. Well, no, because what I'll end up doing is each week I'll release the next set. So, so for the next four weeks, so everyone will be getting pictures for like the next month or so. So your next four episodes are going to be about Austin? Sure. Okay. Is that okay with you? I don't care. Okay. I think it'll be entertaining. Well, oh, there is some really entertaining stuff. Uh, I know. The bearded lady that you said I, was one of the nicest ladies ever. Yeah, Rose, which her and I never ended up getting to hook up and talk, but she, we will at some point. But yes, I met the actual bearded lady. I mean, Yeah, you have Rose. to get her on the show. She was, she was amazingly wonderful, sweet, beautiful, and just all around awesome. Like, she was just, I don't know. She just had this exuberance that just irradiated from her well that's uh that's from what you describe and what i've experienced in my limited times at bearding that's the general feel of all of that well yeah that's everyone it you know was and whether it's whether it's the females or the males they're all just there to have fun yeah well and they're have, good people yeah they're good people for good causes yeah good causes so was she on titanic no not that rose oh because Leonardo DiCaprio would have drawn her nude. Uh-oh. No. No, okay. He probably would have if if she would have been the Rose in Titanic. No, I'm just, just saying. Well, they shared the same name, but not the same person. Mm, okay. Like you and Scott. Yes. <laughs> like Scott and I, and then the other Scott that was like three over from me. But you're going to have to tell me the story about the bearded lady. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, that's that's kind of like we're we're going to encompass the entire... Well, I'm just, I only want trip. to focus on the actual competition point right now. Okay. But, okay. Uh, Another episode. We'll focus on yeah. the rest of the trip and yeah. Rose and... Yes. And all that other fun the, the stuff. The big diamond and Leonardo DiCaprio. Yes. And the, and the picture that... And, yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, I'm really anxious to hear the footage of um, like when you actually were on stage. I can't wait to hear that footage. Well, if you saw the live feed, you heard what it was. So it's I know, not that's, much that's different. Why, that's, why I, that's why I actually said it. You went up there with the microphone, and I'm like, oh, cool. He's actually going to interview on stage. And you didn't. No, I didn't. So, well, how about this? We'll just, uh, at this we'll, point. We'll, we'll ad-lib it. No, right we'll now. Right and, now. And you are? No. <laughs> the beard caster. No, no, no. I am. I am Scott Sakura. <laughs> <laughs> who, who plays the beard caster. But you didn't even... <laughs> I didn't what? even get that out. You I was, didn't. No. They were like, they're like, oh, all right, next contestant. Uh, and the price is right. Yeah. And then you interlocked arms. And yeah. Then, well, you know, and then like, I, okay, I, tell me about yourself. I'm not. Uh, anymore. <laughs> I'm nervous. I don't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> Although that would have been the natural question is, so what's up with the microphones? Yeah, but it was not. I was really that. I was kind of. I figured, you know, the microphone would be a dead. Hey, what are you doing here? Yeah. And I just said I was going to interview you, and you know, and it just it just it was one of those things that just never went. So, oh well. You really should have forced the issue. Yeah, but it wasn't my stage to do that. Yeah, but you were the last person. Yeah, but everything was already timed out, and everything was already running and, and, and behind. two hours behind. What was another thirty second interview? I don't know. It wasn't two hours behind, but I would it, imagine it was nervous. How many people were in the audience? Sixteen thousand. Sixteen thousand. I don't know. You just said I was giving you a number. Oh. <laughs> that was like Lucas's surgery story. <laughs> there I am, buying it hook, line, and sinker again. Once again. <laughs> you, you, I really honed my uh, half-truths down there. That but remember, you, you had set that up by saying that it was a big event and it a big was. amphitheater. Well, they had over 750 competitors. That was just competitors. And I don't know how many spectators. There were at least 10. <laughs> so 
at least 10 spectators. Yeah. Well, I mean, more than... So somewhere between 10 and 16,000 spectators. (laughs) Yes. Guesstimating. I'm not good with estimates when it comes to that, like gauging how many people are in seats. All right. And the lights were really bright, so you really couldn't see much of anything but... Deep in the heart of Texas. (laughs) Yes. That was done many times. (laughs) Did you you do it? No, I should have, though. You really should have. There should be footage of you... And well, it, it would have been a dream come true. Did you visit the basement of the Alamo? No, I was not in San Antonio. I was in Austin. Hmm. That that means nothing to me geographically. I just know oh. that they're both in Texas. Yeah, but and there was a hurricane down there. No, yeah, but that was in Houston, which was how far away is Houston from Austin? Um, on a map, about that far. So, like <laughs> an inch away. <laughs> yes. So probably like 100 miles, 150 miles, 200 miles. I believe close to four. Hmm. Okay. I don't I don't know. I mean, I'm not a, a map. A, 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 map map a matician? Yes. <laughs> a map, uh, or what's a, what's a guy who studies maps? A cartographer? Well, there you go. That was good. Well, I, I, the only reason I know that is from uh, Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Hmm. I, I, I don't know. Oh. I thought cartographer was... Actually, I don't know what a cartographer is. I don't, it neither, sounded right. Though. I know. Neither. It could be right. I, I think it's likely to be right. Well, if, if someone knows the proper answer, you can email me, scott at thebeardcaster.com, or, you know, correct me. You know what? I need an email. You you need an email. Okay. Well, I'll send you one. Bald, baldface Josh at thebeardcaster.com. Uh, we'll see what I can do. I'll never get an email on it. Hey, well, you never know. Get your own show. I don't want my own show. Oh. I want to be on your show. I want to be on <laughs> Let's be together. All right. So you get there. You're backstage. You're nervous. We're, nervous? Already, we're already past this point. I already went No, out. I'm trying to get back on track here. Oh, okay. Was I nervous? I, I, yes and no. Like, I, there, there were 31 guys in my category. Yeah, that was a big category. Yeah, it was. It was a tough one. And, you know, you're seeing all these guys who have these incredible goatees, and I'm just like... Uh, you know, I don't. I know I don't have a chance, but I'm just excited to be here. I'm excited to go out on stage. I'm excited to meet all these guys. Everyone was cool as shit. So I was. And you like, competed in worlds. That's yeah. exciting. Yeah, I mean, yeah. That, I mean, what can be cooler than that? Winning. Well, yeah, but I knew that was not in the cards for me. Yeah, you could tell as people were coming out, you, you're like, "Ooh, that's that's really good." And and the guy that finished in third place kind of surprised me. But then I kind of looked at his beard. Like that big, thick black. Beard. I gotta oh, imagine. Yeah. I gotta imagine that up close was. Really yeah, they were. Nice. Those all those guys really, really deserved. What well, they I think got. I, I don't think you go to nationals. I think you do, Josh. I think you do. <laughs> I wouldn't. Well, this isn't nationals. This is world. world. Nationals is next year. Oh, my bad. And that's kind of reverse. Yes, but you can go. No, I can't. Yes, you can. It's in Richmond, Virginia. Oh, we'll go see Matt and Liz. Yeah, that's awesome. Make them go. Matt, start growing your facial hair. Liz, yeah. start growing your facial hair. Yeah, we know. Now I know it can happen. You yeah. can do it. Testosterone supplements, Liz. Yeah, something. But um, no, what I was where I was going with that was that as those people were coming out, they obviously they all were there for a reason. They all believed that they could win. You didn't have people coming out in the in the goatee natural natural goatee. Is that what that yes. was? Yes, natural goatee category. Natural. That had like a crummy goatee. Yeah. Like those people were going to nationals with the in, the intent that they could potentially win. Yeah. You know, and, uh, you know, even though you don't think you had a chance, I, I don't know. I felt you had a, I felt you had a chance. I a guess, top 10 finish anyway. No, I, I, I'm going to say I'm at least in the top 31. I can. No, I don't can, sell yourself short. Top oh, 30. Shut your mouth. Top 30. No. Top 30 to me. <laughs> isn't that that song so, by Motley Crue? Um, no, that's actually Poison, isn't oh. it? Oh. Top 30 to me. Dur- dirty. Oh. Dirty. <laughs> All right. So anyway. 30 deeds. Done dirt cheap. You're getting there. You're getting oh. there. Done third cheap. Oh. <laughs> 30 cheap. Yes. Okay. So. Yeah. No, I, I really, I really wasn't. You were there for the experience. We we talked about that before you went. You were there for the experience to interview people to to just get to go was a big thing. Yeah, to represent the American Mustache Institute. 
Yeah, and Can You Handlebar, which was another awesome thing. What is Can You Handlebar? They are one of the greatest oil companies. That, well, they, they sell mustache waxes and oils, and they have wonderful products. Could I handlebar? You could. Well, you could handlebar a shirt, because that doesn't need any facial hair to wear. That would have to be a hairy shirt, though. No. A t-shirt you could wear. Oh. But I do have a coupon code. TBM15. So if you want to order some merchandise, oil, waxes, shirts, rags, they have a bunch of really cool stuff through their site. Go check it out at canyouhandlebar.com. If you make a purchase, TBM15. And TBM stands for the Beard Mentor. Dot com. What is the beard mentor? Hey, it's all about teaching people how to properly grow beards, mustaches. Could they help me? They could. Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Is there a beginner's section? There might be, but I haven't gone through all this, the content that's in there yet. But I can't it's, help people who can't grow, I don't think. That's true. I can stubble. Is there a stubble? Is there a five o'clock shadow category? You can start your own brand that's instead of can you hand a bar, it can be I can stubble. <laughs> dot com. <laughs> dot org. Dot net. Dot, dot gov. Uh, dot edu. Oh, damn. <laughs> I, I don't think I have another one. Oh, there's that. It could be any of them. You can get anything. Hmm. HTML colon backslash. No, it can't be that. Now you're getting into coding. <laughs> I don't know coding. Oh, well. All right. So, <clears throat> yes. so anyway, tell, I, I want to. All right. The guys that won your category. Yes. What do you know about them? Aaron? A. A. Ron? A. <laughs> <laughs> yes. A. A. Ron Johnston from. The Holy City Roll, or the Holy... Charleston, I learned that. Yeah, the, um, yeah, he's the co-president of the Holy City Beard and Mustache Society. And we've met many times in the past, but he is an awesome dude. In fact, I got a really fun interview with him that will be coming down the road. Why but I, can't that be in this one? Well, there is, I because I did interview him and his wife. They were backstage right after, right after the, the, they... Did the uh, well? We went backstage after they did the draw or announced who won, mm -hmm. and then we all went backstage. We got our free beer, Lone Star beer, Lone Star. <laughs> <laughs> boy, oh boy, that was a lot of Lone Star beer drank this weekend. Yeah, how, how was Lone Star beer? Uh, apparently, it's just like PBR, but in a different can. I like PBR. Well, you probably would have loved Lone Star. I mean, Probably. it was good. I, I drank it because, I mean, you really couldn't readily get anything else other than that or, like, these really horrible, like, micro-brews. Which, didn't you say, blah. basically was all over Austin? Yeah. That's what that's what I learned can about you, Austin. Can you drink Lone Star and beer. Micro? Ugh. Do they serve it warm? No, it was cold. But they were going through it so fast, it was, like, warm because they couldn't get it chilled fast enough. Oh. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah. But it was still good, though. I, I enjoyed it. I would, you know, if they sold it around here, I'd pick it up. Lone Star. Lone Star. So what was better, Lone Star beer or the barbecue? Oh, the barbecue. Is it really that good? Is yeah. it really that different than the barbecue beer? Well, yeah. I mean, it's, I don't know. We'd have to go. I can't really describe it. I wasn't it. invited. Oh, I know you weren't. You had the school to go to. No, I didn't. It was Labor Day weekend. Yeah, but I was gone Thursday. Could have taken it. Friday. Could have taken down. No, you couldn't have. I didn't. I didn't school. actually have school Friday. Oh, yeah, whatever. Actually, that's not true. I did have school. Well, the kids didn't have school. I had to be there. Yeah, grade papers. No, no, we sat through uh, about two hours of information, and they were kind enough to extend it through seven hours. Oh, <laughs> information about what? Um, we switched over to block schedule. Murder. I'm not, I'm not gonna bore everybody with this, but oh. we switched over to modified block. Yeah, okay. So they're trying okay, to never teach mind. Us all stupid, these stupid. What does this no, have to do with a mustache podcast or a um, beard podcast? Nothing. Because if you were if you were building Legos blocks and you wanted to make a mustache or a beard, you would have to use the brown or the black. That is not true because Legos. the second place Whiskerina used pink and green and she she made a, a, a Lego beard it was very disturbing well then it, it sounds nice to me costume. it sounds to me like blocks did have something to do with mustaching and beards according to the whiskerina category well what a whatever we're not talking about that right now okay 
that's a, a, a podcast down the road. All right, so you yeah. interviewed you interviewed the guy from yeah. Charleston whose name was Paul or A. A. Ron. A. A. O. A. A. Ron. That's right. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so no, I I did interview him and his wife like immediately off the stage after we got our free beers. Were they and, making out? No, oh. but they were both really happy. Well, how would you not be? I don't know. I don't know how you wouldn't be happy. I can't even think about as how the, you couldn't as, be happy. In as this a top whole thing. thirty-first place finisher in the world, I was very happy for him. So yeah, you. Should I mean, be. but that's the way that that's the, the way champion. that whole thing works. He's the world champion, partial or sorry, partial natural, partial beard champion. He's the number one guy in the world. He's got the you nicest goatee in it. the world. Yes. 2017. 2000, 2000. Reigning champion. In the year 2017, he's the number one guy. Mm-hmm. But uh, That's exciting. Yeah, it is. You're a top 31 I could, goatee in the country. Yeah, I know. Well, once I find in out my world. number, then I can get it on my card. Are they actually going to yes. tell you what number you finished? Yes. When do you get that? Uh, I don't know. When it comes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's the best I can do. That'll be an episode in itself. Yeah. Well, opening. Oh, yes, yes. There we go. We opening will open the envelope. the envelope. Okay. I was, yes, at 31. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like shit. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll spend an entire episode just cheering you up. <laughs> I know. And then we can do it. We'll do it like a, uh, like a, a speaker phone with one of the guys from the Austin Facial Hair Club and be like, what does this mean? You've ruined my life. You might lose credibility. No, I know. You might have to cut that episode. I know. So the moral of the story is if the listeners never hear an episode (laughs) where you open up and find out where you finished in Worlds, probably wasn't that good. No, it'll be a different podcast after that. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) This is a podcast all about bitter losers. (laughs) (laughs) If you want to know what it's like to be a loser, this is the podcast (laughs) you want to listen to. Oh, shit. (laughs) You don't even like podcasting. I know. <laughs> We're bitter old men here. and Crumpy geez, old men. I know. And oh my gosh. He doesn't get any better than this. With beers and whatnot. Yeah. Beers, not birds. But uh, yeah, so I interviewed him a little bit. So that'll also be tagged on to this episode here. Uh, a couple other people, which off the top of my head, I, I talked to so many people. I recorded like hours and hours and hours and hours of footage that i still have to go through were you interviewing people on stage uh i i was talking to scott the guy next to me mm-hmm. why we were i believe his name is scott miller if i remember that correctly is he Amish? no he was not and he and he was not did he did not work on a mill it was just uh, co- just a, coincidence just yeah, sounds like coincidence it. but uh yeah no i i did talk to him while i was up there um but that was about it. What did you guys talk about? I mean, I mean, you're attaching how, that, how, right? How, yeah, that'll all be in there too. So just keep listening. Well, I mean, I get it, but I guess what I'm saying is, you guys have you have you're on stands, you're on risers. There's three rows of you, not you Paul are, risers, not Paul risers. There we go, with another Paul. Paul. Um, you were you were in the you were the last one, so yes. you was second to last. So you knew you had time, but yeah. it was going by like, like yeah. Two well, minutes at a time, or something like that. So you're standing there. What do you talk about? Just uh, you don't obviously don't give it away. But I mean, where do you, I mean, do you jam the microphone in his face? Like, hey, real quick interview. Are you nervous? No, like that kind it of was this. Yeah, I mean, like, what do you? How you feeling? What do you think your chances are? You know, and it was. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it was it was a quick, quick little, you know, quips here and there. Mm-hmm. But you know, it was, uh, you're standing up there in front of twenty four thousand people and. <laughs> Well, at least ten. I know, or be- somewhere between twenty and, and twenty four thousand people. Right, and you just—I I wasn't even nervous at this point anymore because it's like I don't know. I get, I get, I don't get nervous at stuff like that, like going out on stage. But you in never front have. Of, well, yeah, but I've never gotten even. You know, going out on stage you've, in front you've of played, ten people. You've played in front of fifty thousand at Wembley Stadium. Yeah, or and I've have spoken in front of a good one hundred twenty six thousand one time at the Yankee Stadium. There you go. But uh, that was not me. No, it was not. Oh, here we go. Brandon King, a avid listener of the Beardcaster podcast, just texted me to tell me that he's listening to the podcast episode number five of the Beardcaster right now. Oh, yeah? Which one? I don't even one? remember who that one was. It was a good one, though. It was probably a good one. It was probably one of my best ones. They're all good. Well, that one was probably the best one. I wasn't on it. I know, but it was 
pretty darn good then. Hmm. Wasn't as good as it could have been if you were on it. That's true. All right, so you interview on stage, you go through, you find out who won. Are you you said or you already said you're happy for those guys and that you didn't go in there expecting to win? Yeah, a little disappointed. No, not at all. Because I just I never felt. Oddly enough, I never had confidence that I was going to even do remotely well just because I saw the other guys and I knew how strict the judging was going to be. What do they judge it based on? Um, that was something I was wondering because you had people that they had really huge long beards and you're like, oh, man, I got, the, but I don't, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know if they're looking, they're not obviously not looking for length because that guy that we're talking about that finished in third place didn't his beard wasn't even as long as yours but i mean it must have been fuller or well, I, I i don't know what are they looking for well i'll tell you with him i mean he was african american right african americans really can't grow super facial hair that's long i mean their hair is just completely and luscious. different yeah and this guy had a big thick full beard i mean though it was not super length but it was full yeah I mean, he well had, maintained. I would imagine. Yeah, that's what it looked like on the feed. I'm yeah. like, mm, not real, not the longest in the world. Yeah. but damn, looks like he takes care of his shit. Yeah, but you take have to take that into account. Like, you know, how skilled is that person to be able to grow a beard? I mm-hmm. mean, that if I were judging, that's what I would have voted on him. I would have given him a high score too, just because once he was an African American who could grow a really big, nice, full beard. So I would give him extra points for that. But I, as for what all the other judges, I have no clue what, you know, each one. But I could even tell, like, as I was going down the line, if they looked at me, like, I knew out of the, I can't remember how many judges. I think there were, there were five. Like, I think there were eight. Were there, oh, wow, I missed some. Yeah. Well, you must have tuned in. Were there late. midget? No. Were there midget judges? No. Oh, oh, no, I'm not saying that again. Okay, okay, go. But, uh, yeah, so you could just tell, like, they were either looking at you, like, kind of like, uh, or they were just, like, <clears throat> writing, and they would just look up at you real quick. and I'm Not like, interested. Yeah, not interested. So I, at that point, it was like, you know, half the judges weren't even, like, making eye contact with you. So I'm like, all right, well, I pretty much knew at that point, like... So by the time I, I mean, this is like going through the run the first time. Because when you walk on stage, you go in front of the judges and then you go to the riser, not the Paul riser. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and then when you go back up to do your interview, then you go back through the judges again. So, but yeah, it just, I mean, it doesn't, I don't really care. I mean, it was just the whole experience was awesome. Do you think when you go across the first time, that they pretty much have their favorites already picked out, like a top five or six, where they're like, "All right, let's just let's get the close up when they come back through." Well, who who knows? Because I was the last guy out, so they had seen our everyone already, so they knew I was the last guy. So, and they, you know, I guess they didn't save the best for last. No, doesn't sound like it. Although maybe you came in last, so then well, they would have saved the best yes, for last. They did the best last placer. But I, I just wonder if who could have come in last plays better than me me actually well if i'd have gone in the natural goatee facial whatever category (laughs) they'd have been like um you don't have a natural partial facial goatee thing hair and i'll be like no i don't in fact you are number 32 (laughs) you would have you could have gotten a magic marker and drawn it in could have this is how it naturally falls (laughs) upon my face (laughs) sir it's lusciously drawn (laughs) All right, so I, I, I guess my point is, if if I'm watching a Miss America pageant, if I'm judging, and I've got fifty girls, Breast size, fifty girls walk in front of me, I'm picking out like my few favorite. I'm like, damn, <laughs> damn. Oh, so you're going by the, their looks? But the, it, this is see, this it's is who the same you're thing. attracted to. And, no, but it, well, for that, yes. But as as they're walking. As you guys are walking across, I'm wondering if the judges are checking you guys out the first time and already drawing their conclusions about like their top five or six or whatever it may be, and just waiting to get the close up of that. Yeah, well, I don't know. I, I mean, I would don't. think it's based on appearance. I don't. I can't tell you. I mean, when I've judged before in the past, I look for like the color. I look for density. I look for thickness. Breast size. Yeah, breast size. Um, I mean. Bulge. Healthiness, bulge, bulge. yeah. <laughs> uh, 
which I think a couple of the contestants tried to use that to their advantage, but I'm not sure. The bulge. The bulge. For the female judge? No. There uh, was a female judge, wasn't there? There was a few of them. Okay. Um, but yeah, I don't really know. I don't know how these specific judges judged, but yeah, so. But she still had a general feeling and. Not like from the TV show, The Car. No. No, it's the general Lee. Oh. No, yeah. so I didn't, I don't know. But you didn't, you, you said you had a feeling that you looking around at the competition. Yeah, I knew. Because it's as a watcher, as is like sitting there watching the feed on my phone, which yeah. I mean, isn't very big. Yeah. That's not what she said. Yeah. And, and as I'm sitting there watching it, I'm like watching all these people. Well, that's a, that's a good one. Yeah, okay, that's not that important. Yeah, that's not that good. Oh, oh, well, yeah, that might win. You know, and then you could just tell that. And I, I remembered sitting there watching it and going, hmm. Yeah, uh, some really good go teams. Yeah. And then I say, and then after watching the other categories, your your category was like two or three times bigger yeah. than the categories that preceded it. Yeah. Well, and. Out of any competition that I've ever been to, that was the biggest that category has been. I've there very rarely is a just strictly uh, natural goatee category. It's always broken down into partial beard, which you'll go against the Donegals, or you'll go against the Chops, or any of those. Oh my God, the Chops were good. Yeah, there was some good in there, but oh, there, there were some serious Chops. But yeah. I saw that too while I was waiting. Oh, all okay. right, very cool. Did you did you interview any of the chops guys? No, because in fact I never got to see any of the categories that whole entire day. Well, that sucks. Well, not really, because I got to do some other cool stuff, like which I can't talk about because that's a different podcast. Mm, no, because it's kind of top. Was it a seat. glory hole? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I was just making sure. I didn't no. know. No, I don't. I don't roll that way. Well, I didn't. No, I wasn't talking. Well, I don't know. <laughs> I didn't mean you were on the receiving end. I oh. don't know what goes on backstage. No, not that. I wasn't even backstage. So I was backstage up for a, a while after my category because I was just kind of hanging out, talking, talking to people and stuff. And then finally, I went back out. I hadn't eaten all day, so I got something to eat. And then I got roped into doing something for like another mm, two hours. But I can't tell you what that was. Okay. N- not yet. <clears throat> not yet. Extra episode, mm, bonus footage down the road. It could be like an extra episode, like a year from now. I think. Okay, but perfect. We'll, we'll talk about that later, though. That's fine. So, but yeah, so I pretty much missed everything on Saturday, which really sucks. Was it an orgy? No, damn, no. But I, I missed everything on Saturday, which made me feel really horrible because I sat there and I took all these pictures all weekend long, and I completely didn't get any categories except for the very end of uh the guys with the big beards so i got the 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 final uh three guys and uh so that was i I felt bad because i didn't get to to take more pictures during the day but i guess that probably worked out better for me because you took three thousand pictures yeah and that didn't include saturday Hmm. so that's a that's a lot of pictures for not including one of the major days i know but I, and then I, like I said, I feel bad because, I mean, I didn't get to give everyone the, all the loving that they deserved. So, as you're walking around Austin this past weekend, yes, it was. Hot. Does everybody have beards? Like, I mean, was it was Austin just swamped with bearded people? Uh, no, not not too not too much. But I mean, there was. I mean, the the Austin Facial Hair Club has, I think. 360 members strong holy moses that could be wrong everything is bigger in texas i know i took a picture of my toast it looked like regular wheat toast (laughs) but it's still texas toast i know (laughs) it was just as crunchy were you like hey what are you trying to pull here (laughs) i know i'm like it's the same size as it is in ohio what are you doing it it, the butter spread on it the same way yeah the butter the butter or the butter the butter (laughs) but uh and the other awesome thing i had was a texas shaped waffle i think i i think you posted a picture of the texas shaped yeah. waffle and, and the I, donut place did you go to was it voodoo donuts or something like that no what but was that yeah, donut place? I did, I, uh, there was yeah there was i think that but and we never went to it we went to some other bar that night to go check bands out and stuff which was really cool captain faucets i think that was the name of the place oh i thought that was the name of the band no i don't know what the name of the band was but they were really good cool but yeah, Austin was a great experience, and 
I would love to go back. And so come and shave it. We can go back. There you go. In February. So what? What? Every year, 11, 11 years, come and shave it. That's the name of the Austin Facial Hair Club's contest. Oh, competition. Okay. Yeah. 11 years it's been going on. Wow. It's a long time. That is a long time. It, it is a long time. <laughs> you know what it is? <laughs> I give up. A long time. Oh. What is? That. Oh. 11 years. It is a long time. Come in your facial. No, not come in your facial. Come and shave it. Oh, my bad. Yeah. All right. So, <laughs> sorry, I don't. I just I don't, realized that the like the last three jokes were all sex jokes. Yeah. Well, the, and we're talking about beards here, not sex. Well, beards are sexy though. Well, like, mm, to so, some people. I'm sorry for you then. <laughs> it's okay. So <laughs> you so ugly. <laughs> <laughs> Me so ugly. <laughs> Me so I have no facial hair. You ugly. <laughs> Do you know what line that? What movie that's from? <laughs> It just since we were on Jar Jar Binks, I, I oh. was just assuming it was Boss Nass. No, I know, I know, but I'm just that's that's why I was laughing because that's what it sounded it like. <laughs> <laughs> hey, however, he does it. No, <laughs> there was a movie with a space creature and a human that crash landed on a planet. Oh, 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 God! What was that movie? Okay. I know the movie. Yeah. Well, what is it? I can't think of it. You so ugly. I, I well, you can quote that all you want. I'm not going to come up with the name of the movie. Out Zombies. Of... Uncle. Mm, I got nothing. Uh, Mickey Mouse. Nope. No. Nope. Mm, enemy Mine. There you go. Okay. I, mean, I love that movie. Yeah, I remember it. I just couldn't have come up with the name. The dude, the alien dude, scared the crap out of me when I was. Louis a kid. Gossett Jr., who also played in Iron Eagle. Yeah, and that I knew. Doug Masterson, remember him? He saved the day once again. No, I have no idea who Doug <gasps> Masterson is. He was the pilot in Iron Eagle. How did he save the day again? He, his he had his tape recorder on his leg, and then he'd play rock and roll music while he was flying the jet fighter. Kind of like Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh yeah, that's probably where they ripped it off from. I bet they did. Uh. I wonder who ripped who off, though. What well, Guardians of the Galaxy was after, so it would have had to be. The there. movie was. The comic could have been around. I don't know when that started. I, but I, I let's, we're not talking about Guardians of the Galaxy or Doug Masterson flying his F-16 or whatever the hell he flew. And we're talking about the beard competition in Austin. Yeah. And how easily we get distracted. We do get distracted easily. All right, so. <clears throat> oh, man. Okay. Top. Well, go ahead. Top. Beard. We got to wrap this up because we're almost already at an hour. Are we really? <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Okay. I, but, I really only wanted to do like a twenty-minute episode with, and then add on what I did. So okay, but then whatever. Then, then let's end here because I, I have one question for you, and then that'll tease future episodes. I hope. Oh yeah. I hope. Yeah, well, I'll tell you. Best beard that you saw all weekend. Like Best. the one, the one that you saw. They're like, holy shit! I have never seen. Any, don't show me a picture. No, no, I mean, no, no, no. I'm not going to be able to see it. No, it wasn't. Okay. What category was he in? Uh, or she? Full beard. Uh, I can't remember. Uh, I can't remember what the, because they did it in centimeters, I think. But when I said that, somebody popped into your head like, oh my God, this guy was oh, this no, guy no, no. Had phenomenal. Okay. Facial hair. So part of when, when uh, Can You Handlebar sent me a bunch of, of really awesome awesome stuff to pass out to people they gave me the ultimate beard care kit which was a value of over a hundred dollars oh congratulations came, they gave it to me to give to my favorite beard of the whole oh, entire oh, weekend i got you so with this kit it came with like oils waxes balms it came with tons of really awesome stuff and they wanted me to give it to my favorite guy that won so as i was watching the whole hey, congratulations weekend, oh i didn't win though so I didn't give it to me. <laughs> if I was there, I would have given it to I know. you. So the guy I picked out was Scott Metz. And I, like I said, I think he was in the, the full beard. Uh, I don't even might, well, he had, here's a picture of him. He's got a must. The, oh my gosh. It's beautiful. That is, that is beautiful. And he's so, got the mustache going too. 
So I tried to... I tried. <laughs> on his Facebook, it says, I've got a beard. <laughs> yes. But anyways, we were staying at the same hotel and everything, and we had we had been, you know, hanging out the whole weekend and everything. And then, of course, the last day when I was going to present him with this thing, I, he was, I couldn't find him the whole time. So I ended up having to give the the gift to Chad Roberts who gave it to Scott and he got it. So, but yeah, his, his beard, I, I think it was just the reason why I picked him was because he had a super awesome, complete beard and a super awesome mustache. And the two complemented each other beautifully, right, which you can see in the picture, which yeah. they can't see, but they can't, all you got to do is look up Scott Metz and, and you, I M-E-T-T-S. Guarantee, yeah. It, and you can look at him up on Facebook. Look at him up on the mm, Facebook. You look at him up on the Facebook. <laughs> Or you can just probably look at any of the news articles that were pictures or that had pictures all over the internet, and they he's in one of the pictures in all of them. So, do you have sixteen hundred pictures of Scott Metz? No, I may have ten. Did you? Did you? So you hung out with him quite a bit? Uh, not quite a bit, but a few times cool. in the evening. Did you interview him? No. Oh, that was going to be my segue into the future episode. No, I did not. Damn. All right, I well, didn't do a lot of competitor interviews. Okay. We'll just put it that way. Well, I'm anxious to hear what you do have in episode... 44. 44. 44. 44. 44. In episode... Well, I just... I was... I started the... F- 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 and I, I didn't know if you were, like, no stuttering. 40s. No, no, no. I was curious, because I'm like, I have 40s. No. I was 40s. waiting for you to finish. Yes, 44. So... All right. Well, but, cool. uh, okay, so... Here, so congratulations on your top 31 in the world. Yes. Yeah, so, but here, And your experience. Okay, but we're going to jump right into what I recorded right now and then catch me on the backside of that. So here we go with the my, my time out on stage and then my quick couple little interviews after that. And here we go. Okay, we're getting ready to go up on stage right now. The herd is going out. Scott, are you nervous? Listen, my name is Scott as well. You've been interviewing everybody today. How about you? Are you nervous? How are you feeling? I'm okay. Are you sure? I mean, share with your audience what you're feeling. You're about to walk out on stage at the World Beard and Mustache Championship, the largest one to ever happen. How do you feel? Nervous. I will admit that. I am nervous, but there's good competition, so good luck to you, buddy. Thank you. We're 10 feet away from hitting the stage. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Last look, last look. V. Okay, now we're looking out onto the stage. We're getting ready. How's everyone doing today? Fantastic. Doing all right. You guys are ready? How are you going to do out there? I hopefully very well, but I don't know. Take it. What's up, Scott? How are you? Good. Thank you. Hello, judges. How you doing? How you doing? Oh my God! He's got nice shoes. Hello. 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 So now we're standing up on stage. How's how do you feel now? I'm ready to do this. We got a good, uh, good group of contestants. There's uh, 25 or so, maybe 30, and uh, we're all uh, presenting pretty well. But uh, there's only going to be one victor. Well, everyone's a winner today. Well, especially in the bearding community, we all look so damn pretty. Yeah, well, heck yeah. Who's your pick, other than yourself? Me and you. Let's go. Scots are going to take the crown. We do three Scots. We could do all three Scots. One, two, and three. Scott Miller represents the great city of 
I'm walking out on stage right now. Wait, hold on. Hold it in that hand. I'll hold it in that. We can do this back and forth. Can we do it? Yeah, like that. Like that. Okay. Okay. So uh, let's what? talk about you. Well, we're gonna do. That. Okay. Well, what's your name? Where are you from? My name is Scott Sakura. I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. Yeah. Another another Ohioan. Yeah. Uh, tell me about your goatee. My goatee is about eight years old and. Well, you've, you've done that. I only have one thing that's big, thick, and full. That is my belly. <laughs> and yes, it is, sir. <laughs> sir. <laughs> I love you. I love you. Thank you. Give me a Thanks so much for coming That's it for all of our competitors. Am I calling out? My beard here on the Okay, I'm backstage after the goatee category, the natural goatee category. I am with, I am with Andrew. How you doing? Are you, you all right? I'm fantastic. How do you? How, what's your feelings of the results? Uh, the results were the winners definitely deserved to win. It's real stiff competition, and they were above and beyond. Oh, absolutely. I wasn't expecting the win, but I was expecting to have a good time. The camaraderie and the atmosphere here is. Definitely worth a trip. I know. It's all like we're like all brothers and family and everything, so it's really awesome. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you. Scott, let's talk real quick. Okay, you and I were next to each other the whole time. How are you uh, with the results? Oh, I'm, I'm perfectly fine with it. I mean, when you compete in bearding, you've got to know that if you can grow it, you're already winning. You're already winning if you can grow it because there's so many people out there that have those baby faces and they don't have the ability to sprout what we have. So going into it, it's an honor to be here. Oh, it's an honor to be nominated. No, no, no. It really is because this is the largest bearding competition in the history of bearding competitions. So to be a part of it, to have these photos, to talk to you, to have these memories, I'm ready. Let's go. This is great. Great day, great weekend. No, I absolutely agree with you. It's more about the experience for us than it is for, like, I mean, yeah, it's cool to win. Yeah, but, you know, it's also the whole experience of the whole entire weekend was just, you know, the, the greatness of it. So, well, c congratulations on being here. Now we just have to find the bourbon. Oh, yes, we need to do the bourbon. <laughs> uh, awesome. 
Let me let me talk to the winner real quick. Please tell us your name, sir. Aaron Johnston from uh, Holy City Beard and Mustache Society. Why did it seem like you had to think about that? Because I didn't want to mess it up like I did out front. Oh, that's all right. Well, I want to congratulate you. Your your goatee is beautiful. I've been admiring it all weekend long. You're a good dude. Your club's great. Everyone in your club's awesome. How are you feeling right now? Shock. That's that's the easiest. Just shock. I don't I know. know. Like when they called your number, it was like everyone's like looking around, like who is it? Who is? I had to take a second. I, I knew it was my number. I didn't forget. I just I needed a second. So, did you almost cry? I'll, I would. I, almost. I, I thought I I expected to, but it didn't happen. So I know you cried. She cried. <laughs> she was bawling. Well, let's hear your perspective. Who are you? I'm Natalie Johnston. I'm his wife. All right. So tell us what your feelings on the whole thing. Oh, this is amazing. I can't believe it just happened. I'm so excited. <laughs> I know it's it's surreal almost. It's like you, you when you came this weekend. It's not you know you you're coming for the fun. You were coming for, fun. but you don't expect to win. You're just coming to see people, see all this amazing facial hair. It's all just about having a good time. But that was just icing on the cake. I know it's it was so awesome. But hey, look at us. <laughs> uh, he's taking some selfies there. But uh, congratulations to you again. Uh, we'll catch up and maybe a bit a little bit later. I want to hear some more stories about your journey here. Yeah, I'll be here, so I don't know. Maybe I'll be able to talk later. I know. Well, this will probably be later, later at the hotel when everyone's, like, finally back from going out. And so you're going to be busy. Well, get a hold of me. So I will. Will right. do. Okay, congratulations Thank again. Yeah, man. Okay. Who are you and where are you from? My name is uh, Rosendo Martinez. I'm from San Antonio, Texas. Awesome. Now, wh- where are you? who are you with? I am representing my company, El Barbon Chingon. What is that? It's a beard co- a beard balm company, oil company. I make my own beard balm, beard oils. All natural, of course? Oh, yes. You use lots of chemicals so it makes them fall off their face so you can win beard competitions. <laughs> no, no, no. It's, it's all. It could be your next brand. <laughs> <laughs> no, all natural, all natural. Actually, 90% of my customers are women. Women, that is, I've heard that statistic. I mean, not 90%, but women tend to love the beard products. They use it for their skin or they use it for their hair. Yeah, actually, they use it in their hair, and they also they, they buy it for their husbands, their boyfriends, their kids. Yeah, they love my they love my products. So you need to hang out at hair salons then. Yes, sir. I hang out everywhere. <laughs> it's good. I mean, and we both of us competed in the uh, natural goatee category. He's got a little smaller goatee, but I was just telling him how how proud I was at the fact that he got up there and wanted to be up there with all of us. I mean, we had guys that had beards that were 47 feet long, but he, he got up there. He was, I think you're my most inspiring moment of the whole weekend because you were just, you were smiling, having so much fun the whole entire time. Yeah, well, my wife says it's not the size of the boat, but it's the motion of the ocean. With beards, I hear, but not other parts I'm not sure about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, with beards. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, buddy. We're going we're gonna to catch up with you at, at a later date to kind of find out a little bit more about your company and everything. So enjoy your weekend. I appreciate it. Have a good one, boss. You too. Thanks. All right. And thank you guys for uh, finishing that off there. Um, please, uh, like I said, check out all my uh, social media. There's links at my website, thebeardcaster.com. I want to send a super special thank you out to our one of our Patreon contributors. We got a new one this past week, Attack of the Beards. You've heard me talk about them before. Awesome podcast out of Florida, which as you're probably listening to this right now, the hurricane's going through there right now. So I hope those guys are doing good. They are going to be restarting the podcast. So make sure you subscribe to Attack of the Beards podcast. Search them out on iTunes or whatever. But uh, thank you to them. And I greatly appreciate their support and friendship over the over the years. But uh, other than that, like I always say, please be sure to tell a couple friends about the podcast and you know get the word out there. It's the only way that helps my show grow and get out to more people and try to make a difference. So really hope you enjoyed this episode. Go to thebeardcaster.com to see pictures. Uh, there's going to be tons of pictures on this blog, episode 43. And I guess that's it. So if you have any questions, feel free to email me at scott at thebeardcaster.com. All right. Cool. Thanks, everyone. And ciao. Where should you hide?
The tears are all dry from the falling 